How's it going fellas, my name's Andy, and recently I made a video about the 10 greatest signature moves in NBA history. Due to popular demand, let's take a look at more signature moves. In part 1, I covered these 10 signature moves, and the link to that video is in the description. So check it out if you haven't seen it. Alright, let's get started, this is part 2. Number 10, James Harden Step Back. This was an honorable mention in my previous video, but I feel like it deserves a spot in this video. The James Harden step back is different from the normal step back because the way he does it is so effortless. Usually when players do step backs, they start by attacking the rim and pulling back very quickly. But Harden's step back is not like that. He barely even moves when he does it. He just stares at his defender and steps back or steps to his side and that's all the space he needs. The reason why Harden could pull this off so well is because he's so good at drawing fouls. Defenders can't stay too close to him or else he could bait them into reaching in. Also, defenders can't stay close to him anyway because he's so good at blowing past them and driving to the rim. That makes his step back so effective because of the space he creates. Number 9, Carmelo Anthony's Jab Step. Melo is known for a lot of things. Bullying people in the post, doing spin moves, fadeaways, but none of them are as iconic as his signature jab step. A move that honestly isn't even flashy or exciting to watch, and sometimes it doesn't even work. But the jab step is something he does all the time. The NBA doesn't keep stats of how many jab steps a player does per game, obviously, but I'm pretty sure Melo did it at least 10 times per game back in New York. Now, I know a ton of other players do jab steps, but nobody does it as much as Melo. The whole purpose of the jab step is to get into a triple threat position. This allows Melo to face up his defender and either shoot a jumper, drive past them, or post them up and play bully ball in the paint. His jab steps are also somewhat controversial. Melo has never been known as a great passer and he holds the ball a lot. When the crowd sees him get the ball at the elbow and starts doing jab steps, you already know he's not gonna pass the ball again. He's either gonna score or miss. And because his teammates clear out to give him space, there's very little chance of an offensive rebound. In his later years, Melo usually just takes a jumper after a couple of jab steps, but back in the day, Melo's jab steps put himself in a great position to score. Honestly, I'm not a fan of his jab step, but hey, it's his signature move and he was a lethal scorer in his prime. Number 8, Dwayne Wade's Pump Fake. Another signature move that's quite controversial, because the opposing team always hates it. Players around the league adopted it as well. Everyone hated it so much that in 2011, the NBA made a rule change just because of Dwayne Wade abusing the pump fake. It said that players that try to draw a foul by jumping into a defender's body will no longer get the foul call. Other players like Kevin Durant and Kevin Martin also had something to do with the rule change, but it was mainly D. Wade. Now, a lot of people think, well, it's just a pump fake. Everyone does pump fakes. But the thing is, Wade's pump fake was so convincing. And it still is. It's the way he does it. It's like he's about to take a normal jump shot, but he actually doesn't. In fact, Wade's pump fake is in almost every other team's scouting report. The coaches have to constantly warn their players to not fall for his fake. Although there is a downside to the pump fake. If you stop your dribble and do a pump fake, but the defender does not fall for it, you're in a bad spot. It's happened to Wade pretty often as he got older, and players don't fall for it as often anymore. Regardless, some players are just better at pump fakes than others, and Wade was the best to ever do it. Number 7, the elbow pass. It was originally done by Pistol Pete, but his elbow pass was different. He didn't bounce the ball off his elbow, but he called it the elbow pass because you gotta snap your elbow very hard when you do it. In this video, you can see what I'm talking about. It's basically a no-look pass, but he snaps his wrist and elbow very hard to make it look like that. Back in the 70s, he was the most entertaining player in the league, and stuff like this is why. Among all the crazy dribbling moves and ridiculous passes, we've never seen a player like Pete Maravich before. He was far ahead of his time. Now, the other elbow pass was the Jason Williams elbow pass, where he literally bounces the ball off his elbow. However, he didn't really do it that often. Every now and then, we saw Williams pull out the elbow pass, but overall, he always made crazy passes. Both Pistol Pete and White Chocolate made some crazy passes. The elbow pass was just one of many. Number 6, Tim Hardaway's Killer Crossover. I briefly mentioned Tim Hardaway's crossover in part 1, but what made it so different than the modern day crossover is that he doesn't drag the ball that much. 
Hardaway's crossover was very clean. Back in the 1990s, there were very few point guards who were as fast, strong, and athletic as Tim Hardaway. As part of the run TMC trio in Golden State, Hardaway made a name for himself as the most explosive point guard in the entire league. For three straight seasons, he averaged about 20 points and 10 assists per game. The Warriors were one of the best offensive teams in the league and played at a ridiculously fast pace. Unfortunately for Hardaway, in 1993, during practice, he tore a ligament in his left knee. And after taking a year to recover, his crossover was still looking good, but he was never the same player again. Over the years, Hardaway has been slowly forgotten, and the crossover has been reinvented by more popular players. But nobody can imitate his killer crossover. Number 5, Jamal Crawford's Shake and Bake. Speaking of crossovers, Jamal Crawford probably has the most unique crossover we've ever seen. It's a move that he's done throughout his entire career for every single team he played for, he occasionally pulls out the move to excite the crowd. Even at an older age, his shake and bake is still as smooth as ever. The move is quite hard to do, especially in the middle of a game. There's been several videos of Crawford teaching people how to do his signature shake and bake, but it's still really hard. And if done incorrectly, it will be called as a travel. Although the move does bend the rules a little bit. Regardless, it's still incredible to watch, and I don't think anybody has done it successfully besides Crawford. I mean, with other cool moves, other players try to copy it and incorporate it into their own games, but nobody has been able to replicate the shake and bake. Number 4, Michael Jordan's One-Handed Fake For every Michael Jordan highlight video you've ever watched, you've probably seen his signature hand fake a couple of times. The reason why he did it so well is because his hands are massive. Plus, it's because he's Michael Jordan. He's such a threat from everywhere on the court, so even if he makes the slightest movement, defenders will be caught off guard. The one-hand fake hasn't been replicated that much. Most players that have done it before were all big men, and that's because they usually have bigger hands. However, some wing players have recently done it too. Kawhi Leonard does it occasionally because he's got some massive hands as well. Lance Stevenson can do it too. I think it's a cool move, it's not that flashy, but when it works, it looks nice. Number 3, Shaq's Drop Step. He called it the Black Tornado. A very simple yet devastating move. He would do a quick spin and use his massive body to protect the ball, then go up for a layup or a dunk. It worked very well because Shaq is a giant. He was way too strong and this move was way too fast. When you got a 350 pound guy doing a drop step, it's impossible to stop. He was doing it in Orlando, in Los Angeles, and even when he got older, he still pulled out the Black Tornado every now and then. Just like with MJ's one-hand fake, the Black Tornado is hard to replicate because most players don't have the physical tools to do it. Despite how big Shaq was, he was still very quick in the post, and his strength overpowered everybody. Ever since Shaq retired, we still haven't seen a big man who is anywhere near as dominant. Number 2, Tony Parker's Floater. I probably should have included this in part 1, but yeah, Parker's floater is iconic. That's his bread and butter. Very few players even knew what a floater was before Parker came into the scene. He really popularized it. He made the floater into a staple move for all smaller guards. In his prime, he was very quick, but he didn't jump that high nor did he absorb contact very well. He usually tries to avoid contact and find ways to score without running into people or jumping over them. That's where the floater came in. It was a way for him to score over taller defenders. Over the years, a ton of point guards started to use the floater as well. Chris Paul, Derek Rose, Rajon Rondo, it's a great move, everyone does it now. And number 1, George Gervin's Finger Roll. Ah, the good old finger roll. Looks easy, but is actually very hard to pull off consistently. George Gervin was the first guy who made it popular, and he did it so cleanly. Iceman had arguably the smoothest game in NBA history. He scored effortlessly and made the finger roll look like a piece of cake. Over the years, the finger roll became a normal move. Everyone practices it and everyone knows how to do it. It's not as easy as in the actual games though. But for Gervin, it was a huge part of his offensive game. And that's all folks, those were 10 more great signature moves in NBA history. Let me know your thoughts, which ones do you think deserve the spot on this list? Anyway, thank you everyone so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.